Matt, you know, we were talking about bologna the other day, and you gave us a good recipe for vegan bologna to how to make your own vegan bologna, um, which for the vegans out there, maybe they crave a good old bologna sandwich, and here's a vegan way to make your own bologna. But uh, there's a guy out there, Jim Bamer, and he has a website called Sandwich Tribunal. And he made himself a pumpkin spice bologna sandwich. So he took pumpkin spice to the bologna level. And does he have tips? Is he sharing his secret recipe? He or no? is. And there's, uh, I found the video. It's 10 minutes long. So I skipped around a little bit because it's uh, a lot of boringness. So I skipped around. But he makes his own bologna. And instead of just using like animal leftovers... He uses more of pork and chicken and beef to make his bologna, and he mixed the pumpkin spices into it. Uh, he says it's uh, better than it should be, better than you think it should be. So what's he using instead of an, uh, leftover animal? I think he's using, like, not leftovers. I think he's using, like, chicken breast and... Ow. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't seem like it qualifies as bologna anymore. Well, what makes a bologna? Does it mean leftovers or does it mean multiple animals? <laughs> no. Is it the goulash of meats? When we looked it up, didn't it say it was pork, like leftover? It must be like leftover pork pieces or something. Now, I did look at the bologna package after you and I talked, and there is pork, chicken, and beef in the Oscar Mayer bologna that Monty bought. So, yeah, not just pork. It's not a special... Uh, variety of bologna. It's just the the regular mainstream bologna, right? I think so. Okay, but is this just like a, a hot dog in a slice versus a tube? When we're talking regular bologna? Yeah, when we're talking regular bologna. I would guess so. I've never thought of it that way. I always go with uh, the kosher, what is it? Hebrew National. That's the hot dog that we buy. Because we know it's all beef. Right, yeah. Well, you can get pretty fancy with hot dogs uh, in right. that sense, but I haven't seen too many fancy bolognese. I haven't either, but I just started thinking, it was like, you know, I've seen hot dog packages where it says like pork and chicken and beef. And so I thought, oh no, is this a hot dog in a slice? And I've been a snob to bologna all this time. So there's a uh, website called Quora. Are you familiar with this? Mm-mm. Uh, basically, you answer or you ask a question, then there are people there to answer them. And both are made with an emulsified meat and fat combination and put in the casing. All I can say is that all hot dogs are sausages, but not all sausages are hot dogs. And bologna is a sausage. Okay, bologna has a combo of chicken, beef, and pork in it, but I believe that several hot dogs also do. And if you want to get picky, hot dogs are American and bologna is European. What's the name of this website? This is a Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. Interesting. And the person answering this question is Howard Field, former head chef graduate from Le Cordon Bleu, whatever that is. It's a fancy food school in France. Oh, okay. You're familiar with it. I am. Oh. Man, that was a big healthy gulp. I apologize. I know. I know. Which is funny because you hear noises that I don't ever hear that aren't right in front of the mic. But okay. <laughs> I, I hear noises that you never mic. hear? Yeah, when you asked if I was playing with something the other day, I was like, no. I didn't know what that noise was. I am so thirsty this morning. I'm sorry. I feel like you're always parched. What's going on with that? I don't drink at night, remember? There goes that gulp again. I was way off the mic on that one. You know, I can... <laughs> Jeez, Louise. You know, I can uh, um, pound a lot of water first thing in the morning. Wake up. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I think I can chug 20 ounces, no problem. Just straight. Uh, go, 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 go. Can you not pull that off? No, because I'm usually like sipping in between making breakfast or sipping in between washing my face or sipping in between. Like I'm... I'm I'm multitasking, Matt. I just I don't stand at the 
fridge and chug a big glass of water. I probably should do that. But, so I was saying, like, you chug it. Yeah, you, you get that done yeah. in 30 seconds. Oh, golly. I don't know if I could do that. Go, 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 go. Right? Not, I'm I not mean, asking you to chug Natty Light. Chug. Exactly. I should try it. I will try it tomorrow morning. Oh, you're going to start hydrating with Natty Light instead? Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. The Natter Days. Uh, have you seen those, Matt? No, I have not. I'm not familiar. Natty Light has different variations of flavors, and I think it was for the summer. Natter Days is like a strawberry lemonade, which is actually not terrible. I love strawberry lemonade, though. So it's just, it's a little sweet. So, you know, you can't, I don't think you can drink like a 12 pack of it, um, like you could, Natty. Uh, there's also a, uh, what's it called? I want to call it, it's the Catalina Lime Mixer, kind of like the, Catalina wine mixer where it's cherry and lime and it tastes like a sonic cherry limeade. Um, and I think there's another one, Aloha beaches and it's a mango flavored natty light. All very refreshing. I was going to say, are all these also just basically the truly drinks slash. Well, they're not seltzers. What are the other really popular ones? White claw. White claw. Yeah. Yeah. They're not seltzers. They're just fruity beers. Yes. Ish. Yeah. Or citrusy beers. Citrusy, yeah. But and it mango. definitely feels like there's been a breaking point of people being over light beer and going for other options instead. I think you're right. Whether that's seltzers, hard seltzers, or whether it's um, more a uh, fruity light beer or whatever. Right. And I'm not going to lie. I'm usually a beer girl, but some of these fruity drinks every now and then and in the summer when you're by the pool kind of go down pretty easy. Tastes lovely. Yeah, so you currently have a pool at your apartment complex. Are you going to mm-hmm. try to see if you can maintain some friendships and get back into the pool when you're in your new place? You're probably not. Like, we don't know anybody right now. I feel like it's a little late to put in the, uh, hey, let's be friends when we move so I can use the pool. Right. Yeah. It feels a little uh, late for that. But there is, so there's a neighbor. So we're not on the golf course where we're building. We're across the street from the golf course, if that makes sense. Um, so we can join the golf course, which has a really nice country club and, and pool. and But it's really expensive for people who just want to use the pool. So I need to be friends with our neighbors who are in the country club so that we can go swimming there. So you could get a membership for just pool and that's too costly, is that what you're saying? No, I don't know if there's one for the pool. I know that there's oh. one in general and it's pretty expensive. Yeah, like country if, clubs are expensive. Yeah, if Monty was going to be playing golf every weekend or when he got home from work or if we were going to use it for something other than the pool, I'm okay with it. But there's also a pool right by the the girls' school. It's a neighborhood pool, but it's, you know, it's a, a private pool where you can buy a membership and... It's like the biggest hangout for our school because everybody lives by the school except for us, which would be nice, except for it's not going to be close. It would be nice to see friends over the summer, like let's go meet at the pool, but it's not going to be right down the street. So I don't know. Lots of pool options. Yeah, pools are great. I know. I really, really want a pool in our backyard. I could go for summertime right now, although it's been an impressively mild winter so far. Uh yeah, I'm always game for summertime, Kate. Yeah, so we've talked about how you usually take trips in the winter. Are you planning a trip right now in the current times? No. Mm-mm. Nope. My brain is so off that idea of going anywhere except my house. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, just so disrupted in that sense. But I mean, I, I would feel fine doing a, just a road trip or whatever somewhere. But once again, it would have to be... I would only really feel comfortable doing outdoorsy kind of things. Right. Until uh, the vaccine is widely distributed into people's arms. So are you going so, to... So no road trip to uh, Florida then? Not yet? Probably not. Okay. No, nah, Florida's probably way down the list. Okay. Last check, you weren't planning any trips either, right? No. No, no, no trips. The only thing that I have to get done at some point is I have to get our storage unit from Kansas here 
maybe not before the house. It'd be nice before the house, but it'd be nice to go through things so we're not just moving junk to junk to junk, you know? So you like to go through things from the storage unit and decide what's going into a dumpster or not? Is that what you're saying? Kind of. Yeah, I would. Before you then load up a U-Haul with it and right. move it. Gotcha. Right, because we didn't do that. We were in a hurry to get the things out of the house that we didn't have mm-hmm. really enough time to go through it. So we did enough for like garage sale and what didn't sell went to Salvation Army and Goodwill. But there's lots of things. So it's like, I don't know what to do with this. Just put it in the storage unit. We'll make a decision later. So just another like we have too much stuff. Too much stuff. Yeah, I st- I still, and this is not abnormal. I, you know, I've lived in my house for about 10 years now, and I still have boxes I have not opened since I moved. Do you really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not that many. Only a few in the garage. Yeah. What do you think's in there? And there's plenty of things. I think there are old clothes that are too big. Okay. I think that's mostly, I, I do need to open them up because I bet you there's some cool stuff in there actually that I forgot about. That's back in style now too. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Or has some nice stylized holes from whatever insects or uh, <laughs> rodents have gotten in there. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. I've never, you know, my house is, uh, it was in, it was new when it was built, so 10 years old. Overall, it's got the, it's built on a big old thick slab, so there's no basement or crawl space to speak of. Oh, yeah? And I have not seen a mouse there once. I've, I saw like a shrew or something on the like in the driveway one day, but I've never once encountered any uh, wildlife in my garage, if you call a mouse yeah. wildlife or whatever. Yeah. We, in our old house, Monty was sitting on the garage steps. It's like the steps into the house, sitting there taking off his boots, and he notices something down by his foot. And he picks it up, and it's a snake skin. Oh and God. it was a decent size snake skin. And I avoided my garage like the plague for quite some time at least it's your garage at least somehow find a way into your bedroom or something that we know (laughs) that you know that we know exactly so for a couple of days he put a heating pad on the garage floor in the middle of the garage to see if we could draw it out and so every time i'd like peek out the garage and look at the heating pad no snake okay so we were hoping that he shed his skin and got the hell out of Dodge. Like, all right, yeah. now I can leave. And yeah, I just went inside because he didn't want us, the other snakes to see him taking his clothes off. Right. That's exactly it. So this idea of putting a heating pad on the garage floor, is that actually a officially recommended way to draw out a snake? I don't know if they recommend it, but that's what the professionals do because they like warm places. Well, I would say that's recommended then if that's what a professional does. Well. I mean, okay. Maybe recommend it's not that yeah. right word. but I would not do it on my own. I would have called somebody, and Monty's like, no, this is what we do. I'm like, yeah, but you're gone all day, so when it does go to the heating pad, then what? <laughs> yeah, you're not the one that has to worry about being devoured by him. Exactly. No one bite. I am a tasty treat. <laughs> Could you tell from the skin what kind of uh, snake it was? My guess is no, right? No. Yeah. He could tell that it was a decent size, but like I say decent size, I'm thinking python. It was not a python, but it was not like your neighborhood <laughs> little garter snake. Right, right. Which I actually enjoy seeing when I mow the grass, I'll see one. Ew. I'll, I'll see one from time. And, and it's like, hey, thanks for being around and getting rid of things. Ew. You know, insects or whatever it might be. Just a little guy. Yeah. You know, just a little foot long at most. Yeah. Kind of guy. I got no use. No. Get the... Hang out in little cracks you know, next to the driveway or whatever. Right. And my youngest, Elliot, she's crazy. She's like, bring home a snake, Dad. Someday bring home a snake because he talk. He works outside. And <laughs> so he'd uh-huh. talk about the things that he sees. And then one day he brought home a snake. And it was a dead one that he drove past, pulled the car <laughs> over, got out, got a box, put the dead snake <laughs> in. And she was so excited about it. It was disgusting. Ugh. Do you remember what she said or? Oh, she was blown away. She thought it was the coolest thing ever. We have a picture of her holding the dead snake that's longer than she is. (laughs) Fantastic. Right? 
not grossed out by it or anything like that. Just totally into it. No, not one bit. I mean, like, talk about what a good daddy is. He drove past a dead snake on the road, came back, got it. Like, what in the world? I assume you uh, made them stay outside with a snake? I watched from afar. Like, I was a good, you know, four feet, five feet away. No, oh, but so the snake still could have given you COVID-19 is what you're saying. Well, it was two years ago, so I guess maybe. It was within a COVID's length. So, but th- was this inside or outside was my biggest thing. was Outside. Oh, gosh, this is outside. This is okay. outside in the driveway. Yes, the dead snake did not make it into the house. Boring. Right, exactly. The dead Come snake on, came out of the box, took a picture, inspected it, and then the box went into the uh, dumpster. So you have Rockney, your dog. I forget. Do you have any other pets at all, including something as no. inconsequential as like a goldfish we or something We used like to that? have a betta fish named Sushi. And oh. she lasted a whole lot longer than we thought she would ever last. And then she became dinner one night. Mm, too suggestive of a name. Right. No. Uh, then she went to meet her friends on the toilet train. Uh, yeah, she was uh, a <laughs> Sushi Pesca. That's what they called her. How funny is that? Sushi Pesca. Yeah. I don't know how funny is that. What's Pesca? Well, pescatarians are people who only eat fish. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So she was Sushi Pesca. Because Pesca means fish, right. basically, right. Right. right? right. Okay. Sorry. So dead fish fish? <laughs> Dinner fish fish? Sushi fish. Sushi fish. So did you actually, uh, is that actually how you got rid of that fish was buried at sea in the toilet? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Flush her down. How common do you think that is versus people just like throwing it in the yard or in the trash? Or... Um, well, it was a tad bit more ceremonial. Thanks, Sushi. Yeah. You're a good fish. Thanks for the memories. Bye. And they're, they're small enough that it's like they're going to... Choke. Wait, if you had like a catfish as a pet, you probably wouldn't want to flush that down the toilet. I do you know people with catfishes as pets? <laughs> I'm sure somebody does. Oh gosh. Surely, yeah. Of course. Surely. Not. I don't know anyone personally that okay. does, but that person exists. Clear. Uh, they must. If there are support peacocks out there, there must be catfish pets. Yeah, I'm still wondering if we're being punked on this idea that there actually are support peacocks. Curious if this is just the... Uh, I mean, why would they say you know, it if they haven't come across it? Just to see how gullible we are and okay. see if we fall for it. I don't know. I don't know. There's been lots of weird things on planes. It's like you'd said before. How does one discover that a peacock is what provides their emotional support? Right. Do you just happen to be a zoologist or something? Or, I mean, you befriend a wild peacock and all of a sudden <laughs> you're a calmer person around... I don't know the whole and it goes back to like it's still nature like you could have raised that tiger cub but it's in his DNA to eat you so you can let that tiger sleep in bed with you one of these days it's gonna say I could go for a midnight snack now I am comparing a tiger to a peacock but that peacock could poke your eyes out just throwing it out there it's like the frog that took the scorpion across the river or tried to or tried to yeah, you know, the scorpion's like, hey, give me a ride. And the frog goes, I'm not going to do that. You're going to sting me. And the scorpion goes, I'm not going to sting you. Oh, but then we'll both die if I do that because I'll drown. And the frog goes, well, that makes sense. And uh, it gives the scorpion a ride. Then halfway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog. And the frog goes, what are you doing? We're both going to die now. And the scorpion goes, it's in my nature to sting frogs. Ribbit. Ta-da. R.I.P. Scorpion. You said scorpion, and my brain mm-hmm. went to snake, and I was like, the snake wanted a ride from the frog? Yeah, had to get my brain on board. Sorry. The snake can probably make it so- make it on its own, right? Right, right, right. Maybe? I think so. Probably depends on the snake. Well, that's what was confusing. I was like, why would a snake need a ride? Yeah, but scorpion. Yeah, it'd be difficult for the snake to curl up on top of a frog also. Correct. Did you know scorpions glow in the dark? I did not, but is this another one of those? Did you know that there's going to be a sequel to The Godfather with Al Pacino? Well, situations. I shouldn't say all scorpions then. I will say the scorpions that live in Kansas glow in the dark. Have you encountered them at night? I have encountered them at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center 
where they've got them Ooh. in the dark. And they, where's that? It's right outside Great Bend. Oh, road trip in, in the Cheyenne Bottoms, which I knew nothing about the Cheyenne Bottoms until I moved out there. But apparently, they're kind of a big deal because of the migration of birds and the wetlands. And there's right. yeah, that's that's about where I end. But really nice education center for the wetlands. Nice education center, but don't look it up on Urban Dictionary. Right. Right. Still have this thing staring at me on the screen. What are the three differences between hot dogs and bologna? <laughs> I think that's actually a good sign, Kate. We haven't been uh, tempted to Google anything, you know, in, in, in quite a bit of time now. I know. You know Thanks, so. Cora. Record length. Hey, Matt, there is this vodka company in Florida that gave away a tricked out golf cart. Like oversized wheels, so you could do like a little off roading, and it's got a stereo and it's got a place for your cooler. It's more than just for golf. Okay. Okay. 11,000 people entered this contest, and this couple win the golf cart. They deliver the golf cart to the winning couple at their retirement community within hours. Of owning the golf cart, the husband goes to the hospital in an ambulance, and the wife is arrested and charged with a DUI. Oh, yeah. Driving while intoxicated with a golf cart? Within hours of owning this brand new, tricked out golf cart. So what happened to the husband? He had to go to the hospital in an ambulance. Well, because of an accident involving the golf cart? Because the woman flipped it over. Okay. Sorry, I missed that. She flipped over the golf cart while she was driving around. That maybe had alcohol poisoning or something. Right. No. Uh. No. But I mean, a vodka company is giving out a golf cart. Maybe they were like, yeah. "Thanks, vodka." Yeah. Did they come with a bunch of vodka? I didn't. Not in the video that I saw. It just okay. like they pull up in the driveway and they've got a. It looks like they're already having a few driveway cocktails and. Then they, the husband and the wife get <laughs> in cocktails. and thank you so much and appreciate it. And then that was the end of the video. Gotcha. Uh, driveway cocktails are actually kind of a big thing right now, right? They are. A lot of people have the uh, driveway gatherings with uh, with neighbors and uh, friends and stuff. Yes. Some driveway cocktails big. and drive their golf carts home drunk. Oh, my. Yeah. And don't drink and drive, even if it's uh, a golf cart. Even if it's a golf cart, yeah. yeah. There's plenty of stories over time, too, of people really getting DUIs on their lawnmower. Right. Uh, sometimes nude, drinking and driving on their various different tractors or whatever. I, I, I wasn't aware of those, but it makes sense. Yeah, I think that happens, too. I think people get drunk, and then they take off all their clothes, and then they get on their lawnmower and get on the highway. Not a good idea. Several yeah, you know, not in the moments, good ideas. In the moment. In the moment, it seemed cool. But, seemed you know. like a good idea at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had that. Me neither. No, I've never uh, gotten drunk and gotten on a golf cart or mower. Or... In your birthday suits. Yeah. Huh. So, Florida. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there it is in Florida. You have uh, Christmas Eve in two weeks, Kate. Uh, I just, I am distraught over that, Matt. Mostly uh, due to shopping or yes. are there uh, other engagements is mostly shopping? Okay. Oh, the pressures of Christmas Eve and, you know, not going to be able to be with family and, you know, not... Not do the regulars of Christmas. Oh, and Monty's having a colonoscopy on Christmas Eve morning. So. <laughs> Fantastic. I know. Yep. And I can't be there. I can drop him off and I have to go pick him up, but I can't be there to wait for him. So. Damn. So Monty's got a Christmas Eve colonoscopy. Merry Christmas. Which means he's got a fast like the day before, right? The 23rd. Yeah. And then drink basically the. Hollywood diet drink or whatever that makes you vacate all the things inside of your guts. I think it's just mag citrate. I have no idea. Well, but, uh, okay. So not to be TMI, but I've had three colonoscopies and okay. the first one I had to drink the horrible like prescription stuff 
And the second one and the third one, I just had to do mag citrate, which you can get, you know, at your pharmacy. And they said, just mix it with Gatorade and call it good. And the mag citrate was so much easier to get down than the like oddly named, not oddly named, go lightly was the name of the prescription (laughs) stuff. Yeah. So I like, so you said mag citrate. And so am I stupid for not knowing what that was? You said, oh, it's just mag citrate. I think it's, um, Mm -hmm. I thought mag citrate, magnesium citrate. Okay. I I just didn't think that that was that common of a thing. Okay. Oh, you know, it's like water, you know. (laughs) Well, colonoscopy talk here, you know. Now the Gatorade, did you have to make sure you drank just like the yellow Gatorade? Because I've heard that if you drink like grape ahead of time, that could mess up. They might think they're seeing blood or something like that. Is that right? Uh, I was not restricted on the flavor, but I did use uh, the lemonade Gatorade because I was going with a like a lemon lime magnesium citrate. Gotcha. So yeah, I haven't had one of these procedures. I haven't had to have any kind of, I haven't had to have my, my guts cleansed oh. in the anticipation of a colonoscopy or any similar procedure. Lucky. Um, but yeah, I'd heard that if you have uh, the Gatorade, they want you to use the kind that isn't like tinted right. dark, like purple that or definitely red makes sense. or yeah. something that might look like blood or, Whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. So, but either way, you, he's still got a fast ahead. So what I'm kind of working to here is the uh, the next he'll be ready to eat all kinds of uh, Christmas fixings after that, right? He'll be ready. Right. So he was already talking about, like, what should we eat for Christmas? Because he wants it to be good. He'll be able to eat. He wants it to be good. We talked about doing maybe crab legs. Oh. We talked about doing some... Uh, Vodka shrimp pasta. Yeah. Something mm. fancy. Something different. Something out of the sea. That we don't do all the time. Something out of the sea. Or fresh water. Not out of the beef that we always do. We did talk about doing steak, but I think he's yeah. just wanting it to be like, you know, we're not doing our normal Christmas, so let's do something special. What else? So he'll come out of there completely stoned or something too on whatever anesthesia or no? A little bit. A little bit. Remember when I got my when I got my wisdom teeth out, right? Uh, ahead of time, my neighbor from across the street, uh, who was the same age, was getting hers out the same day. And I remember sitting in the the lobby waiting to go in, and she had just gotten done. And I remember her walking down the this hall and like clinging onto the wall with her arms. Yeah. And she goes, "Why am I so drunk?" Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. And I was like, man, I hope I don't say anything really, really embarrassing when I'm coming out of anesthesia. I cried. Did you? After my wisdom teeth? Yeah, I cried. My parents were both there. I And I'm also like 26. Yeah, I was 26 when it happened. And both my parents were there. And I was like, I just love you guys so much. I just love you. <laughs> but it was like really mumbled because I had so much cotton in my mouth still because they had to do it a little bit more elaborate than they thought. So I had to have like three of my teeth drilled out of my jaw. Ugh. Yeah. So my mom was like, yeah, you just kept telling us that you loved us, but it was like, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is Monty's first colonoscopy or? No, this is, okay. Monty's had a colon resection in the last 10 years, and this is just, hey, let's see how everything's going. So, yeah. Um, so this is probably his third, I think. Gotcha. So you've already had the opportunity to mess with him in the past. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But gotcha. he's just, like, a, also when he's had a few too many drinks, he is just the happiest and giggly and laughing, like, the whole time. Like he, there's no like, uh, angry, there's no mean, there's no like silly. Gotcha. So he doesn't come out of, uh, anesthesia at all. He's not an angry post anesthetic. No, he's just kind of <laughs> giggly and loopy. It's kind of fun. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I bet. So is it a concerted decision to schedule Monty's colonoscopy on Christmas Eve? He's off that week, so it needed to be that week, and they asked if he would be available on Christmas Eve, and he said, sure, because a lot of people were not wanting those time slots, so 
He's going to go Christmas Eve morning. I want to say he has to be there like six something and I have to pick him up like eight something. Yeah, I think that's something you definitely want to schedule in the morning, right? It wouldn't be very fun to have one at like four o'clock in the afternoon. So you're starving for a really extra long period of time. I can't imagine. That would be awful. Are you watching any of the, you don't watch cable, never mind. I was going to say, are you watching any of the holiday specials on TV? I, well, I have, uh, I have Apple TV plus currently, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of people have these who have bought an iPhone or an iPad or, you know, so on and so forth within the last year. So I still have that and they have some holiday specials on there, you know, like they currently have the peanut specials, you know, like they had the, uh. The pumpkin one, and is there a Thanksgiving peanuts one? There is, but I can't think of it as Happy Thanksgiving, okay. Charlie Brown. And then there's the the Christmas one, mm-hmm. and those are on there. And I'm not sure, did you see there was a little bit of hubbub? People were like, I should be able to watch this without having a have the Apple subscription. Yeah, and they caved. Yeah, they put it on PBS, so let PBS uh, air it. I love that it went to PBS. So initially it was on it was on network television for the longest time, like ABC mm-hmm. or something, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I have owned at least two copies of Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown on DVD. That, and I say two copies because the first one got burned out. And so we had to replace it with the second one before I went and I bought the digital copy. So there are times that we watch Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown in April because it's in our DVD or mm-hmm. in our movie library so when people were losing their stuff i was like just buy it then you can watch it whenever so i'm due to watch home alone i need to watch home alone soon oh you gotta watch home alone yeah i've committed that to that that's my main holiday film i think each year now um i'll probably watch christmas vacation Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. and a nightmare before christmas oh yes i can't I think uh, I'm drawing a blank here as to other ones I should be watching right now. Now, on Christmas Day, we watch Ralphie, The Christmas Story. Oh, yeah. Christmas Story is great. Yeah. yeah. That's what we watch on Christmas Day. I haven't seen that one straight through in a while. I used to see that on the old 24 Hours uh-huh. of Christmas Story on TBS back in the day. Yeah. Which I assume they still do that. I think so. I can't remember if it's TBS or TNT, but we'd always turn it on one and no matter ones. where it was, we'd watch it. And then we'd watch it all the way through. So, But it seems like it's on all day at our house. So, In 1997 is when they first started doing the 24-hour marathon. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah. And That's yeah, crazy. TNT. Has aired annually on TNT or TBS okay. since 1997, titled 24 Hours of a Christmas Story. Consisting of 12 consecutive airings of the film from the evening of Christmas Eve to the evening of Christmas Day. I mean, think about it. In 1997, can you see him sitting around a table being like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play one movie all day long. And I could just be like, this is a horrible idea. This is no good. And it turned out to be how cool. And they're doing it 20 plus years later. Still doing it. Yeah, I'd like to know the background of that, too. These are the kind of stories that uh, can really capture my attention, like the oral history of something, the oral history of uh, TNT slash TBS's decision to air 24 hours of a Christmas story was that like some executive said, you know what we should do is a 24 hour Christmas movie marathon. And like, okay, yeah, let's go see what Christmas movies we can get. And then someone came back and goes, uh, well, we were able to secure the rights to a really good one, a Christmas story, but uh, we weren't able to get any other ones anyone's ever heard of. And then they're like, you know what? Just air that same thing. The entire time. There it is. All I'm day just long. I'm this up. That's just my... Uh, I know. And I could see people rolling their eyes at the table like, that's a terrible idea. We should never do it. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Especially since, like, with uh, Christmas, you're kind of, historically at least, maybe not in these trying times or in these economically turbulent times or these in-between times, <laughs> uh, you decide the phrase to use there. Um... Where historically, you might be going from thing to thing to thing, whether mm-hmm. it's a church, family function, right, different family function, so on and so forth, that you're catching bits and pieces of a Christmas story over the course of that 24 hours, as opposed to being able to have a two-hour concentrated period of time to stare at the TV. 
Right. You know? And, you know, we've Maybe. we've had lots of Christmases where we've been home, just the four of us, you know, not going anywhere. Just it's us all day long. But I think this year it's just like, wow, we're not going anywhere because we can't go anywhere. So it's just a little different. But Oh, by virtue of the fact you're being forced to not go anywhere, it makes it worse than if you could have in the first place. I think so, because... Now, this year, we could go somewhere, but we can't go somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like if you forbid the kids from doing something, maybe they'd be like, you know what? I hadn't considered doing that, but now that you forbade me. But now that you told me I can't, I'm going to do it. Here we go. Here we gonna go. going to do it. 